Hi, I'm Luke. Today on Auto Darts, we are checking out the zinc. Let's get going. I love community Nerf Blasters. I love seeing what 3D printed creators and designers do and what they come up with. This is the Zinc Blaster from Braden over at 118 Designs. Uh, you can find them at 118designs.com, obviously link in the description. This is one of the more unique 3D printed blasters and springers that I've seen in a while. So I was actually really excited to get to check these out. Uh, Braden has been sending me different prototypes for a little while now and actually incorporated some feedback I gave. And I'm not sure if I was the only person that gave the feedback, but I love seeing people that are responsive to critique and feedback on a product because a lot of times I'll get sent stuff and give feedback and they don't change anything at all or just totally ignore it. Um, not that I'm the expert, but I have played with a few of these things at this point. So I'm going to show you this one because this one's actually an earlier prototype. We will um, talk on that in a bit as well. The blaster is surprisingly simple and easily the most holsterable, most compact springer that I have ever seen. It has a top rack slide and a simple mag release here on the side and 3D printed magazines to go along with it. It has some nice features such as grip tape all around the edges and along the top for the slide and a very unique chambering system where the airflow gets reversed in the back here. So this part that's sticking out is actually air running through it here. Um, I did something really similar in a uh, Busby XBZ rocket reshell where the base XBZ rocket is pretty long with the pump, but I broke off the end, made a 3D printed coupler and epoxied it together and it actually worked. So this is a great, very unique way to make this work. And I think it's not really been done like this unless I have missed a design completely in the hobby that I'm unaware of, which is certainly possible. The blaster has proprietary custom 3D printed magazines. Now these are a smidge smaller in diameter and length than say a worker angled magazine. And while I really would love to see a worker magazine work inside this blaster, I suspect this was chosen to save both on size and overall dimension so that the grip feels better and the height of the dart lips on the top here being shorter and more inline, I believe allows this blaster to have a more compact vertical form factor. I've never seen a Nerf blaster with this much power that is this small. Uh, we'll talk about the spring and performance in a second, but it's a pretty neat design overall. So up top, we have a very large plunger tube. It is large enough to fit a 788 or a, I believe a K25 spring, and it has got a substantial amount of air volume considering the size of the blaster. I mean, the blaster is like 50% <laughs> uh, spring uh, air volume or, or um, spring piston here. Now, there are a couple things I have noticed with this. The first being that this spring is at absolute maximum compression. And this is generally not a great design choice. Uh, putting a string to full compression like this not only puts a lot of strain on all of the components on your blaster, but it actually is hard on the spring itself. And the spring may take a set if you're past the solid point so that you're basically past the point of being able to stress this spring and have it retain its full length. So I would not be shocked if over time this wore down and didn't have the same performance. That said, as long as the blaster isn't blowing up and exploding open, that's a pretty inexpensive spring. It's not even a full piece of K25 or 78. I believe this is a 788. So you could very easily upgrade or change the spring later. Um, it's probably the least expensive component of the blaster when you really look at it. So it's a manageable thing. Ergonomically, the grip itself is quite comfortable. On the prototypes, I had complained about a little bit of flashing here, kind of a very sharp edge on the mag release, and that's since been smoothed over. 
The grip feels quite good in my adult hands. However, the actual finger well, where finger guard here, where my finger has to fit inside, is a little bit tight. I my index finger knuckle actually, if I were to push it in all the way, um, brushes pretty heavy, hard on both sides. Not that you would shove your finger in that far. I'm just giving you a gauge for my hands. So when I do pull on this, um, I do find I have to use the tip of my finger kind of at an angle like this. And it's got a fairly strong uh, trigger pull. Now, the prime on the 788 spring is totally manageable. I believe this other one was a K25. I'm going to assume it's a K25. But this was the original prototype. This prime was pretty bonkers strong. And the trigger pull was so hard on the original one that I could barely get this with one finger. I pretty much have to use two fingers. Now, this spring beast shot closer to 200 FPS, while the 788 will average around 134. We'll put the numbers up on screen here. Um, I do find that trigger pull to be a little bit difficult overall. It's enough where I can't uh, hit as accurately because I am really cranking on that trigger pull. I don't know if this is a byproduct of how the catch is designed or just a requirement because of the spring load, but it does seem like there could be some sort of improvement because I, I really do have to um, uh, pull fairly hard. On that note, there's an interesting feature with these mags. Since they do not have this ramped feature that you would see on a normal mag well, the blaster actually will stop you from being able to load another one into the chamber indicating that you do need to load it. And at first that was super annoying. I was like, what the heck is going on here? But if you think about it as a feature, it's honestly quite a good solution. So I'll put it, pop in a full mag here and cycle a few times. So you can, you can kind of see my hand having to squeeze pretty hard. I'm getting some wobble every time I uh, squeeze on there. I can stick my knuckle in a little further and get a little more leverage, but you are going to expect a little bit of, uh, of uh, aim wobble from squeezing that trigger. I've got pretty average hands. I do work with my hands a lot, but it's really just stuff around the warehouse, stuff around my house. I'm not like a tradesman or any person that's got really, really strong hands. I have been that person when I landscaped and did other things. And at that point, I probably could have squeezed this like, a, like nothing. But uh, in my current shape and uh, current strength of my hands, it's definitely a little tough. The form factor is really what this blaster is all about. I could totally see holstering this for either a competitive game or just for regular games, and it'd be a nice sidearm to have due to its compact form factor. The most obvious comparison, of course, that's going to be made and has to be made is the Dart Zone Pro Mark II. Profile-wise, they are a bit different, but they're also quite similar. Uh, the DZP is a little bit shorter in the muzzle end, but on the back, obviously sticks out a bit further. I'd say overall, the Dart Zone Pro, the grip itself is not as comfortable, but the trigger well and the trigger itself is more comfortable. And on this side, the actual grip feels a little bit better, but the trigger well is far less comfortable. Uh, when it comes to that priming difficulty and, and firing and how easy the trigger fires, this feels like a mouse click in comparison to the 118 design. I think this is a really innovative approach to this style of blaster, and I'm gonna have some fun playing around with this at the games. I would caution everybody that's using this style of blaster, if your blaster looks like a real steel firearm or could be mistaken for one if it was a different color or painted, which this certainly could, be very cautious about where you're using these and what your uh, where you're carrying them because we don't want anybody to get injured playing with a toy. You can find the files for this at 118.design. Again, I'll put that link in the description because I think I said it wrong in the beginning of the video. Anyway, you are uh, able to download these yourself. It's an open source project, uh, non-commercial of course, so unless you're approaching them directly about licensing, you should not be printing these and selling them. They've got hardware kits, including all of the hardware bits that you'll need for this for $75, and that I believe includes enough of a mag spring to do three magazines. So I think that's pretty sweet. This is a really fun blaster. I think if you're into 3D printing and like collecting 
different hobby grade Nerf blasters. Uh, shouldn't really even call it Nerf blasters at this point, but foam blasters. You'll have a lot of fun with this. There are some great features. Aesthetically, it looks great. I think seeing the plunger tube and rod there is just fantastic and it handles well. Other than my one gripe is that heavier trigger pull. In the end, I'm gonna give this blaster a four out of five. I think the novelty design and aesthetic alone weren't quite a bit, and it's quite a fun blaster to play with. Uh, there are just some nice touches all around. I like the magnets here that actually keep the slide forward in the end, and it is really a, um, a very unique blaster. We're seeing a lot of kind of repetition in the hobby where there are like six or eight different blasters that are pretty much all a little mini flywheel blaster with blaster through the grip. Not that I don't like all of those blasters like the Lepus that I'm currently building, but uh, at some point it's nice to see something truly unique and innovative. Over at 118 Design, they're calling this the sidearm you've been waiting for. And honestly, if it wasn't for this guy, I would agree wholeheartedly. Um, it's still a really great blaster and it's still competitive, but it's hard to, to weigh the two together. And again, this is a production run blaster. This is 3D printed. They serve very different purposes in very different markets. I think they'll do really well with this. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments. What 3D printed community blaster should I review next? Let me know down below. Until next time, I'm out of darts.